In this tutorial, you'll learn to build interactive content in Articulate Storyline 360 using state changes and triggers. Now, when you think about interactive content, in a general sense, there's really three types of things you can do on the screen, three types of interactivity. You've got your clicking, you have your mouse overs, and then you have dragging. And a lot of times those can be somewhat interchangeable, meaning that you could substitute a drag for a click or a hover for a click. Just really depends on the activity and then what you're trying to achieve. Let's take a quick look at our demo file and then we'll jump into the practice activity. So in this example, we have a click version of this activity where we click each button and we change a state here on the clipboard. And then we also change a state with our character. Click another one and you can see two different things are happening each time I click one of these three buttons. And the next example is a mouse over. So it's gonna be the same example only Things change when I hover over a button, and they notice how as I mouse off of the button, everything restores to its default state. So just another version of the click activity, only we're using the mouse over trigger. Let's try the drag one real quick. So same thing, we wanna drag one of these up here to the clipboard. I release it, drop it on, changes the state of the clipboard, and then changes the state of the character. You also notice that as I drop each button on the target, it disappears. So there's actually an extra trigger telling that to hide the object when it's dropped on. Let's jump into the practice file. All right, let's take a look at what we're working with. This starter slide has a slide background. So if I turn everything off, you can see that there's just uh, some background images here on the uh, slide master. And I've got my three buttons right here, A, B, and C. There's no triggers associated with them yet. And we have a document here above the clipboard. Remember, the clipboard is really on the background. It's just, just a placeholder graphic, but we have this what looks like a, a shape right here actually is the paper that we're going to use to trigger the states. So we have the A, B, and C states right here, which are custom states. And as we click each button, we're going to change this to a different state. And we're also going to add an additional trigger to change the state of our character, right? She doesn't have any states, but one of the benefits of using the uh, illustrated characters is that their expressions will get added as you add triggers. So I don't even have to create custom states for her. I can just trigger that. So let me show you what that looks like. So the first thing we want to do is let's just change the state of this, this, this document from state normal to A when the user clicks A. We do that by coming over to the triggers panel and adding a new trigger. So when you're working with the triggers, it's always helpful to ask, what is it you want to do? And then when do you want to do it? Well, the first thing I want to do is change the state of that document. So we already have the state selected. And the object, of course, is the document. And I want to change it to state A, which is the first state, which matches and corresponds with the button A, when I click the object A. Click OK. Hey, okay, that rhymes. Go ahead and click Preview. And nothing's going to happen here, right? We just have the rollovers. But when I click A, you can see right there that we have the state change for the document. Let's go ahead and add one more trigger so we can change her state. Close Preview. And with the button selected, I'm just gonna come back over here to the triggers panel. And let's do another trigger, add another trigger. This time we wanna change the state of Lily, who's our character, not to state normal, but to alarmed. She's alarmed that you made that choice. When user clicks, when I click the object A. So we have two change state triggers right here. We're changing the document and we're changing Lily. And that's how you progressively add more interactivity in Storyline, you just continue to add triggers to make more things happen or make more decisions or interpret what the learner's doing. Go ahead and preview your slide. All right, so I click A and I should see the something change here in the document, then I should also see her expression change. Click A and there we go. Two things changed, got those two changes. Now it's up to you to come back here and update these buttons for the remaining changes. I'll show you one more state right here that's really common when you're building tabbed interactions and that is we want to evaluate or show a visited state. So if I click edited states, we also have this visited state that's a built-in state, and it lets us basically visually indicate that, yeah, you've already clicked this choice. So here's what it looks like. I'm gonna add the trigger, and I'm just going to do something different here for the formatting for this button. Let's just make it a white. So we'll just kind of white it out after you visited it. Click done. And the way the visited states work is as soon as you've clicked them, they're visited. So this one I'm clicking, there's no change, right? But when I click the A, 
Notice when I move away, the A is a different color. And that just indicates that, yeah, it's still active, but it's been visited. And once you click something, it's visited. You can't unvisit it. And it's just a way to provide some visual feedback that, yes, you've already clicked this object, you've interacted with it, you've viewed some content. All right, go ahead and close the preview. So for you, your homework, go ahead and finish the activity with the B and C buttons for the click activity. And let's jump over here to the mouse. So same activity, right? We have the same document right here with the same states. We just want to change the state as the we mouse over each letter. So again, what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and add a trigger. We want to change the state of, so that's the same. The object is the document, and we want to change it to state A when, not when I click, but when I mouse over, right? When I mouse over the document on object A, go ahead and change it. Now here's a really neat feature right here. It's called restore on mouse leave. What this means is, is that when you mouse over something, it's gonna change like the trigger says up here, but when you mouse away from the object, it's gonna to restore to its original state. So you don't need a separate trigger to restore the document or the character back to their, their normal state or their starting state. You can just check this box and that trigger is sort of added for you. Now there might be times where you don't need it, so you can certainly uncheck it and just let everything remain visible after, as it's moused over. But in this case, we definitely wanna use that. Click OK. Let's go ahead and add the next trigger. So new trigger. And this time we wanna change the state of Lily, not to normal, but to, let's say, alarmed, when mouse hovers over A, right? So the same activity we did before with the click, this time we're just using the mouse hovers over. We'll keep the restore set as well. Click OK. And let's preview the slide. Okay, these don't have anything on them. Now I mouse over A. You can see that she changes and the document changes. And it restores when I mouse away from the document, right? Hover, off. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's do the last one for the drag and drop. Okay, same interaction as before. The only thing we've added here is a hotspot which we'll use for the drop target. We'll use that to drop each of these letters on to initiate the state changes. So just like before, right, we have our, our object right here. We wanna add a new trigger. And this time we still wanna, we still wanna change the state of, and we'll, we'll start with the document. to state, state A, so document's going to A when user. And if you look down here at the bottom, we've got two drag and drop events. We have a dragged over and a dropped on. Uh, we'll just use the dropped on for this example. So when it's dropped on, when object A is dropped on the target, change that document to state A. Click OK. And let's just copy this one. And we'll paste it just to move it a little bit faster. And let's add a new trigger. And we want to change the state of Lily this time to alarmed when, right? Not when we, we click anything, but when we drop something on. Right, so when drop object A is dropped on the target, go ahead and change her state. And let's preview the slide. Okay, so these are not draggable, but just by adding that trigger, I've now created a drag object here. Drop it on. I can see that the state changed, and I also see her state changed. Now there's only thing here is that this object is still visible, right? It's kind of just sitting on top of this A. I can bring it away and, and put it elsewhere. But let's just make that disappear. So we're gonna add an extra trigger for this one, right? So what do we wanna do? We wanna make this thing hidden, right? We wanna make it go away when it's dropped on that target. So we're actually gonna use a third trigger in this example. Let me go ahead and add that new trigger. And we're still doing the state change, right? And this time we're gonna change the state of A right, that button, not to normal, but to hidden, which just means invisible, it's just gonna be gone. When we drop the A, so we can still change its state even when it's being dropped, right, we're gonna change the state of A to hidden when it's dropped on the target. Click OK, and let's preview this one. All right, so everything's gonna be the same except for when I release this and drop it, it should disappear. And that's how you can work with custom drag objects that change the states of other objects. And that's how easy it is to build interactivity using the common interaction triggers in Articulate Storyline 360. So go ahead and work on the practice files, try them out for each buttons to complete the exercise. If you have any questions at all, please just post in the forums and we'll be more than happy to help you out.